here is a statement of hope. Verse 25 of chapter 4. And Adam knew his wife again. Now, now, now y'all, 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 y'all follow me. So whatever childbearing was going on was not mentioned because I believe of the emotional state that was going on between Adam and Eve. It's obvious they had some more children. But why are they not mentioned? They did not carry the impact that this one was going to have. Are y'all feeling me yet? Just, just how it reads, and Adam knew his wife again. Right? Now, we know that that's an intimate word about, and not just the physical intercourse portion of it, but the emotional tie. But they were physically intimate prior to that because the boys married somebody, right? Right? Y'all not following me yet. So Cain and Abel were the first, but there were some other children in there that were not mentioned because Adam didn't know her with them. He had intimacy with her, but he didn't know her. I'm trying to say something to y'all, y'all like that. All right? He knew his wife again, right? And she bare a son, and they named the son Seth for what? Instead of? Okay. So, so with the birth of Seth, there was something that was happening in the climate of their understanding. There was something happening in the earth rim that she said, this is a replacement for what Cain killed. All right. I'm asking you, can you dig down within yourself and say, I've got some critical landmarks in my life and my spirit that I know this was a this was a critical season in my life that something was introduced into my spirit man that has remained with me since that day. Anybody? And whatever that day, whatever that moment was, whatever that season, it has changed the fabric of your earth, of your soul, since that moment. I'm trying to get you to relate to an appointment. You with me? Keep going. And then from Seth, Seth did what? Verse 26. And to Seth, to him. Okay. So nothing is said about any of the other children in between there until Seth comes. Seth changed the atmosphere, right? She said, I've got a replacement and appointed, right? And then Seth did, did what? Well, you know, Seth's wife had to be a relative, right? And then Seth and his whoever relative got together and they had a child, and the child's name was, and something happened with Enos. That's critical. Enos, whatever happened in the earth rim, when Enos was injected or pierced into the earth rim, men started calling upon the Lord. So when Enos showed up, men began to pray. <laughs> what did they do on your earth day? I'm going to challenge you today. I want you to go back and look at the day that you were born and look at what happened in the world on the day you showed up. Because whatever was going on was part of the backdrop for you being introduced. Does that make you want to go study it out, look it up? Okay, all right. So now you understand now. We said now with Adam, what was introduced? Say it. It ain't going to hurt you. you got, it ain't going to kill you. Sin came through Adam. Right? And what came through Enos? Prayer. So what, what was in Enos' arrival that so affected the climate of the earth in their day that men felt like we got to call out to God? 
and it's recorded just like that. So what is recorded on the book, God's book of purpose for your life on the day that you showed up? Aren't you curious to know what could be written? Okay, you ready? Let's look at another one. Genesis chapter 12. Very, 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 very familiar story. Right? We're talking about Abraham. What was Abram called to introduce into the earth realm? What was Abram called to introduce into the earth realm? What was authorized to come through his gate that the world needed? Faith. Well, right? he's the father, the apostle said, he's the father of faith. So when Abraham came to the place of spirit, he was called to introduce through his gate faith. No, 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 wait a minute. You said the time of his spirit. See, what you're called to introduce is already in you. You just don't know it yet. It's called purpose. It's called your destiny. It's called that thing God proposed to do through you. To introduce, and it's in you, lying in the midst of all of that other stuff, yeah. Yeah. waiting for somebody to pay attention to it. And the one that needs to pay attention to it is to you. Is you. And how do I come to place it? You got to change your mind about which one you're going to be ruled by. All of your soulless experience, what we call history, are all of your future possibility called destiny. And they coexist. Am I in your room yet? Well, 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 faith, well that faith has to be tested. That faith has to be tried. So here is here God allowed Abraham to soldier and soldier soullessly, naturally, in a place called Chaldea, Ur. It was heathens. They were idolatrous people. And God allowed that to nurse her faith. <laughs> Y'all not following me. So, 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 so whatever, whatever is in you is being nurtured by the other part that's going on with you. And you need both of them to exist. Y'all not following me yet. So, so here's Abram. He's in Ur of the County. They're heathens. They're idolaters. Uh, they, there's ugly stuff going on. But according to Acts chapter 6 and 7, it's the God of glory that showed up to Abraham while he was in that backdrop and started putting a demand on what was on the inside of him. All right, so then how, how are we going to bring the man purpose to introduce faith to a faith moment? Abraham, here's your first test. Will you leave what is familiar and step out into a place you have no idea of? Uh. Now, you know he stepped out, right? But he didn't step out all the way. He went as far as Haran, Right? And then God had to put another demand on some things to make Abraham move. Things like what? Well, your daddy's a problem. We got to get rid of that daddy. Right? So as long as the daddy was in the picture and Abraham felt some level of allegiance to his father, he was not going to move to the place. So God allowed Abraham to get as far as Haran to, to deal with his daddy in Haran. And after the daddy passed, he kept moving. But that's how faith increases. You say, well, I'm just going to believe God that I'm going to have supernatural faith. Well, it's got to be challenged if it's going to be exercised. Right? You say, well, I mean, you, you look at some, some famous athletes. You, you think they were born with a basketball in their hand? I mean, those skills had to be honed. They had to be trained. They had to be perfected, right? So the thing in you has to be nurtured and perfected. Well, how does it happen? God said, I got to put it in a backdrop that's going to make you go after. Oh, okay, you didn't like that either. I'm going to 1 Samuel chapter 3. I, I think I'm teaching better than y'all responding. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with y'all today. Pre-Christmas jitters or something. I don't know what it is. Thinking about the package underneath the tree. Something. Ready? Now, let, 
We, we started off with this gentleman last week because this, this, this is really powerful to me in first Samuel, because Hannah represents a whole culture of people that don't understand why God is not allowing you to birth your purpose right now. Huh? It says, can I, can I read it? So y'all won't get mad at me. It says, verse, 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 2, he had two wives. One was Hannah and the other was Peninnah, right? And Peninnah had children, but... And this man went up to the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Shiloh. Where? Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, they were priests of the Lord and they were there, right? Yeah. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peninnah his wife and to her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a what? A For he... Loved but look what it said. Who shut her up? Say it again. What if the Lord has shut us up? Now, it, it, it said she had no children. It didn't say she, wasn't, she was barren. It didn't say she couldn't conceive. It just said the Lord had shut her up. Right? Now, we, 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 we understand that Hannah represented a nation that God did not want to produce anything out of because of where their mind was. Right? Their mindset during this season was that we want to be like everybody else. God did not want them to be like everybody else. Right? We want a king. I don't want you to have a king right now. Because I want you to understand that I'm your king. All right? So, so it was not never, don't want you never to have, don't want you to have it with your existing mindset. There's some things you, you just ain't going to get right now because your mind is whacked. <laughs> I'm sorry, you want me to say it different? There's something wrong with your stinking thinking. Why? Why would God give you his best when he knows you're not going to do anything with it? There's no point in giving Israel David right now when he knows that they're just going to misuse David. Give him somebody that's going to wear him out first. Y'all don't want to hear that way. Come on. I, 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 Y'all with me? So Hannah represents the state of a nation that they need to understand that whatever I'm doing through you, I wanted to glorify me, not you. So that whole deliberation with Hannah and Samuel was about putting Hannah in a place that she understand Hannah, well, if I do this thing with you, will you give me the first fruit of what I do? And she, when she hits that point, God opens up her womb. Now, she didn't understand what she was pregnant with. She was pregnant with an instrument of transition. Huh? Now, where was it lying? It was lying down in all the emotional turmoil that was going on in her spirit of whether or not she was better than the other wife. It was lying down with all the years of him giving her better portions than the other one, yet she had no physical evidence that she was fruitful. Are y'all listening? Well, 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 it was down and the Bible said the enemy had vexed her to the point that she thought there was no good thing that could come out of her. But it wasn't that she did not have the potential or the ability. She had the wrong mindset. What if I tell you, you just need to change your mind about some stuff. You with me? Now, this thing. This thing, this seed that she has purposed to introduce. Now, now understand, all the years she was shut up. And all of a sudden she has this encounter with Eli. Is he reputable? Come on, Eli. 
He prophesied to you, would you believe it? Come on, y'all need to tell the truth. Look at his boys, would you believe it? Would you? You're like, I don't know if I can trust this word. The Bible says if a man can't take care of his own house, he's a what? Infidel. I mean, right? But he's still used, though. In the sense that he said. You're right. Stay, stay with me a minute. Don't take all my word. Let me, let me work. <laughs> Is he? Would, would we? Would we? Would, it, would we? Trust what he said. Huh? I mean, he's the priest. His boy stealing money out of the offering, laying, hooking up with all the sisters coming through the church. Come on, would we, would we put any faith and credential into anything he said to us? No. No. Because we are not the God of the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth chance. <laughs> huh? we, we ain't got that kind of patience for folk. Right? As soon as we find out they got some history, disqualified. <laughs> Am I right about it? Huh? Right? Y'all 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 sure about that? If Eli had preschool, would you send your kids? <laughs> Hannah's getting ready to do it. She getting ready to send her toddler to Eli's daycare. Would you? <laughs> Come on, would you? Would you, would you sign him up, sign a contract, say, look, you can raise him all the rest of his adult life. Would you? Come on. Answer the question. Huh? Elder Mayor, would you? No? No? Would you send your grandkids to Eli Daycare? Huh? But not, not based upon what information you got. He don't have a good track record. Excuse me? What about ours? What about our record? Would we be disqualified? Why, why, why do we keep in our mindset the fact that we have the history of how often they've done it wrong mean that there's not grace for them to get it right? Because whatever we thought about it, whatever we thought about it, God thought enough about it to say, I'm still going to entrust this transitional person into the care of this man. Because maybe because he's done it wrong twice, there's enough good in him to do it right concerning this one. Maybe, maybe Samuel represented a way for Eli to press. How do we know? We said, well, I'm going to send some other kids there first. Mine ain't going. Now, 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 this, this opens up another thing. Can God really keep me in the midst of evil? Can, can God set me in the midst of what is not integral. And I maintain my integrity. Wow. Yes. Yes. Amen. Could God make me the ambassador to heathen land and I still open up my windows three times a day and pray? <laughs> is it possible that God knows which one of us can be placed in that kind of environment and still be a light? That light can coexist with darkness and still be light yes, and not be diminished. Yes, sir. Is it anybody in the room? Yes, sir. We got to change our mind. Okay, so, so, so watch this. So here is, here is Samuel, this transitional person. Remember I said he is, he, is, he is going to be the end of the line of judges. He is going to introduce a new level of the priesthood. And he's also introducing a new line of the prophetic. All coming out of what the world would call a curse. Because she appears to be barren. Right? So he starts having this encounter with God. Now watch this. 
I'm at the end of chapter 3. 19. And Samuel did what? And Samuel did what? He grew. Where was it? In Eli's house. And he what? And who was with it? In Eli's place. Come on, y'all need to say it. Come on. Here in the school y'all don't want to send him to, he grew and the Lord was with him. And the wicked take care. Come on, y'all to say, see that? Uh huh. And he grew and the Lord was with him. Right? And what else does it say? And did not, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And the training was in Eli's school, but this man was so accurate and on target that God wouldn't let any of his words fall. In other words, God honored his word like his own word even though he was in an atmosphere that was not conducive to that level of accuracy. Y'all don't like that, do you? Come on, come on. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, look, there's hope for you. Come on, there's hope for you. Tell them you just need to change your mind. It's not as bad as you think it is. It's not as jacked up as it feels. Come on. There's possibility in the midst of this darkness. Come on. I'm trying to build your hope. I'm trying. I don't, I don't know what you're in. I, I can discern. I feel it in the room. Some of the stuff you might feel that's holding you, oppressing you, keeping you back, but it does not have that kind of power over you. It really doesn't. It cannot hold you long. Temporarily, it can snag you. At best, it's going to form you, but it's not going to kill you. You know, Genesis chapter 1 says there were some things that God created and there were some things that God made. God created some things. He spoke them into existence, but then he reached into what he spoke into existence and said, in the fabric of what I already spoke, I can make it into something else. God spoke your original existence only to make who you are becoming. Y'all not following. What are you talking about? Genesis, Isaiah 43. He created Jacob only to form Israel. Did y'all hear me? He created Jacob to form Israel. So whatever that thing that you're in, let's call that your creative essence. But out of your creative essence, God said, I can step into that and form the better part of you. Come on, reach out to and they put the hand and said, he's going to put his hand on you. And start forming you. No, no, watch this. So, so now look. The people's impression of Shiloh before Samuel came was not good. They were offering sacrifices at Shiloh. And we know the presence of the Lord was kind of haphazard. Because we read in chapter 2, where we're reading in chapter 3, the light was out. Eli's was dim. I mean, you had people criticizing, wondering, what kind of church service is this? I mean, they, they, we put our money in and they slide the money out, stick it in their own pocket. I mean, I came in to get an appointment with Eli and I got an appointment with the son. He wants to have a rendezvous sexually. Come on, sound like the church of 2016. Right? So Shiloh did not have a good report. It didn't have a good representation, right? So when you thought about going to Shiloh, it was mixture. Until Samuel came. Look what the next verse says. And from all in all Israel, from Dan, knew that. <laughs> Woo! Y'all not listening to me. Look, look at the word. He was established. We, we said this last week. The establishment comes when you're set in a backdrop of persecution and affliction. 
God used all the climate of the house of Eli to establish what was in the destiny of a son named Samuel. He could not have been established without the backdrop of Eli. So you're, saying, you're saying that my mess makes you look good? <laughs> Are you saying that all that ugliness in my life is going to make the purpose of God that much more settled and established? Absolutely. From Dan to who? They all knew that Samuel was established to be. Are y'all listening to me? The one that went to the rickety jacked up school was established. They all knew that God was using this situation to establish the prophet. Wait a minute. It don't stop there. Look what it says. And the Lord. The Lord. Where the light was out. Came back. When he got established. So Samuel becomes the gate. To introduce God back into the climate. Of a people of a culture. That it lost sight of God. See I need you to tell yourself. I am a solution. I am not a problem. I don't have problems. I have remedies. So the Lord comes back to Shiloh. And keep reading. Alright. So by the, Lord, by the word of the Lord. The Lord reveals himself to Samuel in Shiloh. Now, listen to what I'm saying. Hear me in my closing. It could have happened nowhere else but Shiloh. <laughs> huh? I'm asking you to align yourself with that darkness that you're in. It's going to happen right in the midst of where you're at right now. Huh? I'm going I'm to wait till I get out of this and shine. No, you're going to shine right in the middle of it. That's what God said. I command that the light to shine out of darkness. You are going to shine and you're going to become right here in the midst of it. If we got to wait till you get out, we don't want to see it. We want to see it while you're... We want to know the fabric of your worship. We want to know the character of your devotion. We want to know if your God is really God where you are right now. Show us! Show us the God of Elisha. Are y'all here? Yeah. So imagine this from the concept. I am called to usher something into the fabric of the atmosphere where I am right now. I need to align myself that as much as everything in me, my soul says, get out, run, run, run. My spirit man said, no, this is the backdrop. This is the darkness. This is the confusion for your destiny to come in the full manifestation. I need to align myself. God, Hallelujah. You got it? Come on, on your feet. We're going to stop here. Come on. Whew. Hallelujah. 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 I'm in the right place. I just need to get my mind right. I need to change my thinking. This is a possible, 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 possibilities are all.